G'day folks, time to do a little bit more on the oil pump system. As you can see I've made a cover for the uh, tank that's going to be return. That'll probably have a uh, temperature sensor in it and uh, that bit there will get cut off. This is just backing or backlight diffuser material from an old LCD monitor or television. This was the old security monitor actually. It's uh, acrylic, about I don't know, 12 mil thick, 10 mil thick. Um, right now I'm just dismantling and cleaning up a uh, was it Whitley, Whitty, or was it Whitey, something like that? Um, needle valve. It's a very high pressure needle valve from a gas sampling unit. So I just got to replace this rubber O ring so that the spindle doesn't leak, and we should be right. That just pops off, and I'll stretch that O ring off. I've got split Teflon washers there too. They're a two piece washer, as you can see. Well, not, not a two piece, but they have a cut through them so that they can be fitted over. I'm going to leave them. I'm just going to replace this O ring. I just don't want it leaking. It's got a, uh, a seat in there. Is it Delrin seat? 6000 psi at 100 degrees Fahrenheit and 1000 at 250 Fahrenheit. Very high pressure valve but it's a slow release needle valve, it's not designed for sudden dumping of pressure, that sort of thing. No good for a homemade air gun or anything. But very good for uh, metering and bleeding pressure off things, particularly high pressure. So you yeah, can take that off anyway. Okay, for the uh, outlet manifold I'm going to use this uh, high pressure air block. It's all one quarter inch BSP, all this stuff's quarter BSP, that's going to one quarter refrigerant line, which actually screws into this flare nut perfectly. So it's a uh, industry standard fitting, but that'll go into there, that'll go into there. I'll have a couple of the uh, Volvo fittings, uh, not that one. No, not that one. That's a big coupling. Actually, I think that's a check valve. It's got a... Yeah, it's a check valve. Yeah. I'll have one of these coming off it. That will be the outlet to the oil filter and cooler. And that will be a bleed valve and service port. Or a bit of both, actually. I'll have a, uh, a T, another T. And I'll have bleed straight to tank. I'll have service pressure um, yeah a few other different things mostly just pressure monitoring but the main thing is to have the bleed set up and at least one pressure gauge so we'll see what works out it'll work whatever it is I might have to swing this around a bit and mount a uh, bracket coming off here and just bolt the whole thing to it or clamp it to it with hose clamps just so nothing can move far enough to break things that or I weld a bracket off here or the base plate. Either way, it's infinitely customizable. Oil pressure gauge is an old uh, AC spark plug division type gauge, AC gauge. Very old, but it still works. So that will be primary oil pressure, I think. I could even make it secondary oil pressure. I'll use a higher pressure gauge, not that I want the uh, filter oil cooler to exceed like 80 psi. You certainly don't want it getting too high or things start to go pop. That's one thing to watch out for. But the output orifice from this pump, I have had this out and I can't really customise the uh, unloader too much. I've weakened it off a bit. But the output from the uh, unloader is like 2.5 millimetres going into this big line here, so it's already restricted. Um, it just It'd have to have a serious obstruction to build pressure uncontrollably and combined with motor speed control and an overpressure switch. That's what I was going to put on there. That's going to be an overpressure switch. That's going to be a uh, pressure gauge. So yeah, we'll have a uh, refrigerant high pressure side switch or something like that. I'll find one which trips at about 100 psi and I'll also have a pressure gauge. So this thing will have a safety cutout built into it just in case. It's unlikely that a plug up a blockage will occur but it's worth having a uh, cutout so I don't blow my filter or cool it a bit. Okay well that's a rough idea of what the output tree will look like. 
I might revise it if necessary, but that should be it. I'm just going to find a way of mounting it. I'm going to slacken this nut off and actually spin this flare fitting around so I can have it back here. I'll weld something to the side of this bit of box tubing and uh, probably hose clamp or clamp this whole thing to the, that uh, upright. I'll even make a plate with three screws in it and uh, clamp it up tight so it can't move and break things off, particularly if it gets bumped or something like that. Yeah, it's a nice little setup. It's good collecting uh, old brass fittings and things. I love collecting this sort of stuff. You strip out old compressor control panels and things like that from big industrial refrigeration equipment and air compressors and things and you get some amazing stuff. Well worth keeping. Yeah, there we go. Revision 2. After I forgot to put the second T on there. Now I have an outlet and a service port and a high pressure switch and a uh, well, bypass valve, manual bypass. I'm just got to work out a position for it. So as you can see that can swing inside its fitting. I'm just thinking I'll uh, tack weld something off the side here and have it come up with a just a polyethylene spacer, a little block of polyethylene or something. A bit of uh, 25 by 25 square tube. There's a bit down there in the corner there, so I can uh, make an upright, clamp that on fairly tight, assuming it, it's over far enough. I don't think it does. Anyway, I'll find something that works. I just want to stop it from being able to wiggle around. Somewhere really like that. Okay, well, this project's gone way into overkill mode, but who cares? It's uh, universal for various other projects. I haven't replaced these hoses. I don't don't have any half-inch cooler hose. Only uh, low-pressure heater hose, and that's definitely not very good. I had a look on Gates' website, and they just said don't use it for oil or pressure applications past like 50 pounds or something. So. Whatever I've got in new stock is not adequate, so I've just shortened these and cut the uh, nasty looking ends off them, and the rest of them seem to be fine. So that'll do. If it does leak, it leaks. If it blows, it blows. It's always fun. Just got to find a way to couple the output to the uh, input of the filter, and we should be right. So I've got to go to the lower one there. I might even get rid of these fittings and uh, replace them with a rigid line wouldn't really hurt. Probably be a lot easier too just to cut a line to length and flare it and screw it in there. Not a big deal. But yeah, it should work quite well. What I could see inside the cooler and the lines is fairly clean too, but I'll let it run just pumping fluid, plump, pumping oil through back to tank before I hook it up to the turbo. Get every bit of air out of the uh, cooler, the filter, the lot. Just make sure it's completely bled and ready for action. Alright, well, we're ready for a priming test and bleed air out of the uh, gauge lines and pressure cutout. I decided to go with an adjustable cutout because the uh, little screw on set preset refrigeration ones just don't have the pressure range. They're either too high or too low. So that will uh, work very well. I've got it set to about 100 psi, 700 kilopascals, and it works. I've tested it. So let's bleed some air out of the lines, prime the cooler, and just let it run for a while. <coughs> I'm using uh, Castrol 10 something diesel engine oil, cheap stuff. I wouldn't use it in much else apart from the industrial engines, and I've got about 60 litres of it. There's a drum there. It's a refilled drum, it's actually a Tri Tech drum, but it's actually uh, cheapo Castrol crap. I won't use it in anything other than industrial applications, so if I have to top, I'll probably have to top this up after priming all this. There's a lot of volume in here. But as you can see, we've got the filter, that's all set up. There's a really nice setup. I like the look way this thing's looking. So let's run it. And this bleed off's open too, so that's probably where it'll come out first. Hopefully not shoot all over the workshop. There we go, I heard it prime. Oh, 
was making slurping noises. There's an air bubble up in here, that's half the problem. Ooh, there we go, just heard it ingest a bit of air. Oop, there we go. <laughs> You're slurping and carrying on. bit coming out of there now, that's for the uh, pressure switch. Oh, there we go. I know I'm aerating the oil a bit, that's going to be an issue. Dumping back in above fluid level, it'll start sending air bubbles to the pump. So these, well, there's only going to be two returns, one from the turbo and one from the uh, overflow going in there at the far side of the tank. Even if I have to put a sheet metal baffle in there, I just don't want aeration causing problems with the pump and the turbo bearings. Yeah, the pump's making little clicky noises as it ingests a bit of air. It's pretty good. I'm going to hook up some pressure gauges and see what I'm getting. It's not going to be much, but it's better than nothing. And that's diverting all flow to the outlet. Very good. Okay, well, even with the gauge on it, you can't read anything with that discharge open. That's not a bad bad thing anyway. That's reading off the top of the uh, oil filter. So that's pretty good. Uh, when I get everything connected up with high pressure lines, this is going to be a high pressure line. That's going to be replaced with high temperature line. Um, regular vinyl tubing is not rated for high temperatures. This stuff's rated for 200 PSI, which is heaps, but it's just not rated for more than uh, 140 degrees Fahrenheit. So. I'm going to replace that anyway with some auto trans cooler hose. Um, yeah, that'll be auto trans cooler and new hose clamps. Might even replace those hose clamps because they're old ones. Um, yeah, a little bit more work and she'll work quite well. But right now I'm just going to keep flushing the uh, oil cooler and everything out. Let's give it heaps. Uh, it's 53 hertz, just past its normal operating speed. It's doing its job. The pressure's come up a little bit, maybe 10 psi. Yeah, I'd say we've got about 10 psi in the manifold. The needle has moved. There is pressure in the manifold here. Well, sorry, pressure here. The gauge is connected back there. I don't have a gauge for that yet. I'll put one on soon. <laughs> 